What makes a story boring? What makes a story boring? Ugh, anything with superheroes. Ah, sorry. I, I don't like superhero movies. Okay. Uh, why? Um, well, that's a good, I mean, if, why? I, you know, I've watched, I sat down and watched like a dozen of them once. Because I said, okay, well, I got to look at these. I'm not giving a fair shot. And I just, you know, there's a guy running around in tights. If you're running around in tights, you should either be sword fighting, you know, in the 16th century or uh, in a ballet. Ballet is great. But the, uh, I, just, I just never buy into it. Um, but, I, you know, they're fun. I get people like them. But I, I figured out why they're popular, even though I'm not the audience. It's because it's uh, replacing religion. Uh, the single largest uh, religious demographic in the United States under the age of 30 are the non-religious. And uh, so religion is having less importance in life in America today. And I think it's being replaced with the mythology of the superheroes. Because you get to see, you know, like the ancient Roman gods, the ancient Greek gods, they had a whole pantheon of these. And now that's taken the place, you know, in comic. And you can dress up like them. And you can go to Comic Con. And you can engage in your uh, religion. I don't know. That's my theory. That's, interesting. that's my crazy writer theory. No, I could see that. So then a non-superhero movie, what makes a non-one boring? Take that out of the equation. What makes a movie boring? Or a story in general. I know you talked earlier about not enough conflict or passive characters. I think a story is boring if it doesn't matter, if there are no stakes, if the people in the movie, if they don't care a lot about what is happening and what they're doing, then the audience won't care. That's to me what makes a story boring. If you're watching a character and they need to raise, they need $10,000. Why do they need $10,000? Are they paying for their child's operation to save their life? That's important. I'd be like, oh, that matters. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> are they just trying to buy a car so they can go to work? I'm like, okay, that's a real thing, I guess, but uh, so what, you know? <laughs> Oh, um, you know, uh, James Bond is, is, you know, is he, does he have to kill this guy because, uh, you know, because the guy took his parking space or is he doing it to save the world? You know, it's like, why? You know, unless you the French, the French can make movies about being boring and make those work. You know, there are certain indie films where you can, you, you can actually delve into that in, in, in a deeper way. But, uh. For me, that's it. If, it if, if the stakes aren't there, if, it, if the story, if, if the hero succeeds or doesn't succeed or whatever, why does it matter? If it doesn't matter, I don't care. So for you, when you go to see a film, and I know you said lately that you've been so busy with all this, you don't even have time to watch television. But it, before all that, um, could you tell within the first few minutes it was going to be boring for oh, you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. My girlfriend, bless her heart, uh, <laughs> just has to listen to me, you know, after the first minutes of a minute, I'll say, this is what this movie is about, just because I can't, can't help it. Um, but like we recently saw um, Their Finest. You know, Their Finest is a, is a British film about a woman who is hired to make propaganda films in World War II in England. Okay. And in the first few minutes of that movie, they bring you to London, World War II, uh, under the Blitz. You know, there's bombs coming down, and there's this young woman who needs a job, and uh, because her husband uh, is having a hard time getting hired, um, and so she needs a job, and she goes into the office of the propaganda, the, the propaganda film office for the British government. They, they call her in, and the stakes are there uh, for two reasons. If she doesn't get a job, Okay, her and her husband are in, she and her husband are in trouble, and uh, if she doesn't make good propaganda films, then the public, you know, that is being bombed, okay, may feel more bleak. Whereas if she does a good job with these films, they'll feel better. Now we all know how World War II ends, so that's it's not like if that's in doubt. We're wondering, gee, who wins here? You know, but it's super. But we don't know how individual people felt in London at the time being bombed. So that's a mystery. We're going to find that out. So immediately, the first five, six minutes of the film, you care. 
if she gets this job and if she's good at it. What was it about those stakes? Because I mean, the storyline sounds great, but if someone else did it and the stakes weren't there, there, there must have been little nuances about how they drew you in that, that made you sit up on the edge of your seat a little more. Well, they had several kinds of stakes. They had just, first of all, the war. They had the big stakes, the, the, the broad stakes, um, the morale of London, the morale of England during this fight. Those were the big stakes. Then they had the personal stakes. Uh, she was a woman. They brought her in. It was this, this film office was run all, by all men, okay? And they were very dismissive of her. They had been told by a higher up that the propaganda films that they were making, that the female dialogue was terrible. <laughs> and so they said, you know, well, let's bring in this girl and she'll write the female bits. And they bring her in, they're very dismissive. They go, you just, you, we'll, we'll do all the rest of the work, my dear. You just, just fill in the female bits. And they were very dismissive. So right away, there's this uh, chauvinism appropriate for the time. And, and you're like, hey, that's not right. You know, 2017, you're like, eh, you know? <laughs> and uh, so there's these immediate uh, personal stakes as well. So they added a layer to it. Hmm that, uh, that uh, was threaded throughout the movie. But it wasn't all about just girl power. They moved beyond that later in the movie. They made it even deeper. Sure, but that, that, those different layers, it sounds like, drew you in. There were the higher stakes, then her, her uh, stakes at home, and then you add this sort of like combative environment that she has to go into. And yes. so there was many things. Interesting. Okay. Right. So then when you see a movie that within the first five minutes it falls flat, are we only seeing one layer? Is that sometimes why? Or, or it's, it sounds like we really can't break it down to a science, but... Yeah, it's not a science. If it was a science, then, you know, we have computers do it. We just, uh, sure. nobody knows what's going to be a hit and what isn't. And there's so many factors in making a movie. So many factors from the script to what the director's doing with and the cast, you know. Uh, one uh, a cast member, one actor may make a character sympathetic. The other, another different actor might make them annoying. You know, you know, it's just so, so many factors. By the way, uh, I like the name of your website, Film Courage. I'm curious how you came up with that because it takes courage to make a movie. Um, even if you make a bad movie, I mean, nobody says to make a bad movie. If you make a bad movie, it still takes courage. I'm not talking about the fake kind of courage that like Apple has when they take away our headphone jack on the iPhone. Uh, but it does take courage. And to make a good movie takes even more courage. You, you, you have to take a chance. You have to go out on a limb. You have to do something that hasn't been tried before. Because if we've seen it all before, why do we want to see it again? Why? Why does it take courage? Because it seems like if it's in you um, and it just pours out, wouldn't, wouldn't nothing stop you? Or is it putting it out in the public space and holding it up to the light for scrutiny? That's where the courage comes into? Well, that definitely. But to do it in the first place, I mean, to go into show business in the first place, on the face of it, it's a stupid idea. Uh, 300 people move to Los Angeles every day to become actors. Okay, that is a million people over 10 years who've come here just to be actors. Now, the odds, if you just look at the numbers, the odds of you becoming successful as an actor are terrible. Uh, as a writer, they're terrible. Okay? So if you look at it logically, you go, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to become a doctor, I'm going to do something else because it's, uh, there's, a, there's a very clear path. I get my degree, I go to medical school, I become a doctor. It's clear, it's logical, it's reasonable. So <laughs> to even go into show business takes courage because the odds are you're going to fail. So the people who make it are the ones who can't do anything else. And by that I mean they won't get out of bed for anything else. They just can't, they have to do it. They're driven to do it. Okay, those are the ones who don't give up, who keep going because they can't do anything else. They just keep doing it.